right, welcome to uh, another edition of Darkwing Builds. I guess that's what I could call them. Um, but here we are doing the Mark 85. Um, I have been experimenting with uh, different slicers and different settings and different filaments. Um, some good, some bad. Um, probably the worst one out of this build was Solutech and Cura. Um, calibrated the E-steps, tweaked some of the retraction rates and flow rates and Z offsets and got, ugh, that. Um, but that's kind of why I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tinkering with these things to see what does what. Um, I put a lot of time into these masks, so it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter because they all need some form of sanding and filling and things like that. Um, this was Hatchbox filament, which turned out very well. Um, this was also Salutech, um, but it was, I don't know, it was just a better, better quality. It turned out a lot better, a lot smoother. Uh, I used Creality Slicer for this and this, and then these were, uh, Cura. And I went from this to this, so I was able to make it better, but it's still, it's gonna need a lot of sanding and a lot of work. Um, this I used the Prusa Slicer which was fantastic, except when I printed the helmet, uh, I did not make the uh, overhang small enough. So it created a ton of work for me. So although the helmet printed beautifully, now I got all this. Um, so that kind of stinks, but it's not really that big of a deal because I'm just gonna put some body filler over this sand it, smooth it all out. Um, it really only created maybe 30 minutes of work for me. Um, it's not that big of a deal. If I was selling this as a raw print, it would be it would be shot. There would be no other option but to finish it. Uh, and I'm not actually gonna sand it first, I'm actually gonna fill it in first because you can see how it kind of dips here. Um, this was the main basis of the um, support. I printed the helmet like this, you'll see it in the video. Um, which was really the best way to do it because there were minimal supports it needed. It was basically just a support plate right here. Um, but Prusa defaults the overhang to zero. <laughs> so I had a huge amount of overhang. So lesson learned on that one, but it's okay because like I said, um, there is a lot that goes into making these helmets look as good as I try to get them. I don't really understand the hinge feature here because they, the file that I got, it'll be in the description. There's no, you think there would be a piece that pops in here that connects it, but there isn't. So to me, this hole is kind of pointless and I don't really like some of the gaps like right here, and I don't like the gaps up here. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. I might end up, I'm probably gonna end up filling those in. I'm probably gonna actually have to take some fiberglass um, and fill that in. So that's kind of kind of a bummer. Um, so this won't be, none of my helmets are really wearable. Um, they're mostly for display. Um, I am gonna try something different with the uh, eyes. Um, you'll see that in the video. But the first thing that I have to do with this is, um, kind of get sanding some of these edges down here. Uh, I am gonna get some body filler on the back of this and start working on it. So I may do some time lapses in this video. I know I kind of just talk and then show the before and after. Uh, so maybe with this I will, I'll show some more in-depth process. But uh, we're just gonna use some Bondo brand body filler like we always use. I've shown it in a few of my videos. But I'm basically just gonna spread that, let it harden, uh, sand it down with 100 grit sandpaper, and then start working on everything else. So, uh, progress on to the next scene. All right, so here's a short video of just getting the um, body filler set up if you've never used it. It basically consists of two things, a resin and a hardener. Um, this will harden eventually if you, well, it mostly dries out if you don't keep it sealed. So one tip is bang it closed with a hammer. Um, you can see how some of this stuff here uh, has been left uh, on the edge and it will eventually get tacky. It can harden over time. So if you don't use it a lot, just make sure you take a hammer, just like you would like a paint can. Um, but basically what you have to do is just kind of scoop this stuff out. Um, so what I'm using is just a piece of cardboard. You don't really need a ton. Um, when it's fresh, you can kind of pour it right on, but as it gets lower and lower, you kind of have to scoop it. So, um, and you can wear gloves. I 
don't really care, so I just kind of get it on my finger, as you can see there. You don't really need a ton. Um, a lot of the times what happens is it'll kind of harden uh, if you don't work it in. I'm terrible doing this one-handed, by the way. Um, that's really all I'm going to put in. You don't need a lot of cream hardener. Um, let me see if I can... I'm going to look around my phone here. Um, you really just need a small dab. That's really all you need. I mean, it comes with a little spreader. You can see mine's kind of beaten up. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually mix this together and then show a video of me applying it, just because it's hard to do with one hand. And I don't want to mess with the... let the hardener harden too quick, so... Let me get this mixed and then we'll sh I'll show you guys applying it. All right, um, so here we have the body filler. I'm spread out, it should be kind of like a pinkish color. And really all you're gonna do is just kind of apply it and spread it evenly. Now I'm not gonna do the whole video applying this because I want this as smooth as possible, but you don't wanna lay it on super thick. All you want to do is to fill in the, um, the low spots. So you can kind of see how you kind of glob it on, but then come in on an angle, about a 90 degree angle, 70 to 90 degree angle, and see how it kind of fills it in. You want to scrape off as much as you can. That way there's less sanding to do. So let me get this applied here, and then I'll show you a quick after video. Okay, um, yeah, luckily I, was, I put the phone down because it was starting to harden pretty quick. Um, you can kind of see I used every little bit that I had, and then some of it, gets left on there on the spreader but you can see it starts to get it's, it's pretty much already hard um it'll start to flake off um like i said it's, it's no longer liquidy it starts to get almost rubbery so i've spread this on here i'm going to let this harden i'm going to do a light sand and then do one more coat and it'll be completely smooth so you can see how it's kind of filled in all these areas so that's what we want so we want to sand this and then we're going to do another layer and um i've I need to get a tripod, <laughs> clearly. Um, but I'm gonna sand this down, give you a shot of that, and then do another application of the body filler and it should be ready to go for priming. All right, uh, so here you can see after sanding uh, what we are left with. Um, I didn't go crazy OCD. Um, my next step will be more OCD. Um, I figured there are gonna be some parts where there's some dips and some craters and things like that. That's why I don't, I just try to get it as uniform as possible. Um, you can see some of the spots here and there. Uh, what I'll do is I will wipe this down with isopropyl alcohol uh, just to remove all the dust, get everything off of it. And um, then I will just go through and spot fill um, all the areas where there are divots and craters and little things. Uh, I'll smooth off all these things, blend them uniformly into here. And then it'll be done. Uh, it only took me about 15 minutes. Uh, it really wasn't too bad. So this second step here will probably be about 10 minutes of just filling in these little areas. Um, I'll let them sit. I'll come through. I'll sand it again, do two stages of sanding with 100 grit and with 220. And then I'll start kind of going through the mask and cleaning it up. Like I said, some of the uh, little, little nibs and little things. Um, there's some small spots on the side where the... Uh, um, supports were that I've got to knock down. I've got to grind down some areas on the eyes here. Um, so it created a little bit more work for me, but nothing crazy. And again, it's the back of the mask, so it'll be um, nice and smooth uh, once you get a couple of layers of filler primer on there. And then obviously the paint, it'll all fill in when it's all wet sanded and everything. Um, this was the filler after it hardens. So when you use it, um, you can just kind of like crack it off. See how it's like peeling off there? And then your spreader's clean and you can use it again. Uh, I just use cardboard because um, when you're done with it, just throw it out. Um, so I'll clean this little pallet up here, crack this stuff up, fill in these little spots, sand it, and then um, we'll just do a quick little time lapse of uh, just throwing some primer on there and getting a look at it. So progress, progress. All right, moving right along to uh, working on the uh, Mark 85. So there are uh, a few things um, that are gonna be going on in this next step. Obviously, um, we fixed the back helmet piece here. That was where that support was that kinda 
jacked up the whole back. Uh, for the most part, it's smoothed out. It will get smoother. Obviously, we really haven't done much sanding, but you can see where the body filler went from here to here. And I basically just primed this just to get an idea of where all my defects are. Um, I highly recommend doing that because a medium tone primer really shows that great. Um, so you can see that there's just uh, there's just a lot of things that we have to fix in this print. Um, one major thing, and luckily it wasn't detrimental to the print, was there was a crack that was developed right here. Uh, I don't know at what point in the print it happened. Uh, it happened on both sides. Um, and this one's actually, it goes all the way down. Um, again, not too worried about it. Most of the crack is, is actually up here, and this is just in the fine layer. So this will get all filled in with body filler, so you will never even notice that that's there. Um, so again, not too, too worried about it, but um, a lot of what I call blips in this print that need to get knocked out. Um, and I like knocking them out before I sand because if you smooth these out, it's going to be really hard to try to get that out. So basically what I'm going to do with that is just go through with a fine razor blade and just flick those out or maybe even a precision screwdriver and just knock all those out. And there's, again, little imperfections throughout the print. Um, this is just held together with some masking tape. Um, we know we are going to fix this for whatever reason. This was a, um, a hinged version of this print, which I'm not going to have it open and close. So this will just end up getting um, filled in with some body filler. So no real big deal there. We just set to load some on and uh, fill it in. Make sure it adheres good and we'll be okay. Um, so we'll rejoin that body line there, make a fresh line, uh, and then basically just sand all this. So the first step is uh, I'm gonna get all these little blips out or nibbles out or whatever you wanna call them. And we're gonna hit it with 180 grit. Uh, just start to smooth this whole process out and then we will get to our glazing um, process where we start to fill a lot of this stuff in. Um, what's nice about this helmet is, that's why I have this here, <laughs> it's all separate pieces, uh, similar to old school Iron Man, so um, not the same way I did the Iron Patriot helmet where that was all one piece. Um, this whole piece here is one piece, this jaw is a separate piece, the cheek and the chin are a separate piece, and this is a separate piece, so these will all be sanded and prepped individually and I will only adhere it together at the end, uh, which will really make this flawless. Um, I personally like doing helmets like this that are in smaller sections. Um, it just makes things easier. Taping all this and doing all that, it was, uh, I don't wanna say it was a nightmare with the Iron Patriot helmet, but you get one shot and if you don't, you're back taping and going over and over and over. And it just gets monotonous. So this will be very nice because I can just do piece by piece by piece and it will be nice and smooth and all the paint lines will be crisp and clean and it's really gonna be an awesome mask. So um, we're gonna get sanding with this and we will move along to the next process. All right, here we are. Once again, next step in the Mark 85 helmet. So basically what I've done here, I'm doing things a little bit differently. Traditionally, I would go right to the uh, glazing putty or the filler putty, but because this is so curved, and I don't have to worry about a whole lot of lines and, and losing any um, definition or aesthetics, so to say, I went more aggressive with the sandpaper to see if that can knock down more, okay? Now I know there's gonna be some areas here around the eyes, right here where the supports were. Um, couple spots on the top helmet there where I'm gonna need glazing putty because I'm not gonna be able to get super you know super in-depth with the sandpaper but like this I should be able to throw a couple coats of filler primer on get it all smoothed out now right here in these corners um, I'm gonna have to you know put filler primer or filler putty the glazing putty uh, on that but all these areas here I mean these are just flat there's no um, you know lines uh, here I will have some you know some worries so I'm not going to be able to go crazy with the filler primer there but you can see how much the uh, 
100 grit followed by the 180 grit really took off and, and that's good but a lot of this is going to be smooth now when we put the filler primer over so um, I'm trying things a little bit differently with this one because I don't have quite as many lines to worry about except for on the sides so the sides here I'll probably do mostly um, the glazing putty and uh, everything else I'll probably just be able to do some filler primer on um, these I don't really have to worry about. This is the lip and then the cheek pieces. Um, these are, you know, fine. Um, so trying to think is a little bit different with this one. See if we can't speed it up. Um, again, uh, 100 grit and then 180 grit. I used, had my wallet in here. Um, just because it's nice and smooth and round. Um, now, or I should say curved, not round. That's round, that's about it. Um, what I did after the fact uh, I have to find my tool. I probably lost it. Um, is I just took a piece of plastic, just a plastic razor blade, and like on the helmet here, uh, I just went through and cleaned out all these crevices because there was dust in there. You do not want to leave that dust in here. You leave that dust in here and primer over it, you're going to fill that in. So I went through all these, cleaned it with a piece of plastic. You can use a plastic razor blade. You can use a, a real razor blade, be careful with, because you could gouge the plastic. Um, I actually started using a piece of clear plastic and I lost it. And that's why I had to grab the razor blade and now I lost the razor blade too. Um, but uh, it's in my other videos. I, I'll, I'll do a, another um, a little, a little lapse of me actually doing it. But yeah, you just want to go in here and contour with the, um, with the piece of plastic and just kind of clean it out. I mean, you can even take, um, I don't know if I would, but you can take like your, your license and basically just kind of go in those lines there and just kind of clean that up. Now, some of the lines are really thin. That's why I use a thin piece of plastic, but that's essentially all you want to do is just go through and just scrape any dust out from those crevices. Uh, and then what I did was I took a towel, which I threw somewhere, but you can see I've got my isopropyl alcohol and I just threw some on a rag and just wiped this whole thing down. That way it gets any residual dust. You can see there's no dust and really focused again on wiping in here to get all the dust out um, of those crevices. So what we're gonna do now is get all these kind of um, set up here. And we've got our Krylon two in one filler primer. We're gonna put a coat on here and see how it looks just before the rain comes. All right we're back so I had mentioned in the Iron Patriot video that when I do these builds I'm going to start trying different things and, and showing you why certain things work and certain things don't so this is something that I constantly constantly see on the forums is people saying sand it filler primer it sand it filler primer it sand it filler primer it sand it I mean they're you know it's crazy and does it work? Yeah, but you waste a ton of time and a ton of product. And this is uh, this is a perfect example. So I figured I would try this just because this isn't this isn't normally what I do. So I tried doing a I sanded it. I actually filler primed it once very lightly just to see how um, how banded the the print was. And this wasn't like a, a crazy amazing print. Um, the layer height was like I think 0 0.3. Like I just. Did, printed it really fast so this really wouldn't be a print that you could do this with now if you print something finer at a, at a different layer height uh, say a, a, a 0.13 or 0.14 and you have your printer dialed in yeah maybe you could but um, this was printed at just like a normal a little bit faster of a speed um, I think it was somewhere around like 75 or 80 and the layer height was default on on, on Prusa, so I believe it was 0 0.3. So, and this is crappy Solutec filament. I haven't had very good luck with it. So, basically I did a light coat of filler primer, I sanded it with 100, and then 180, and then this is a heavier coat of filler primer, and you can still see that there are just, there's a ton of lines, and this looks terrible. Okay, so, to sit here and to sand it, filler primer, sand it, filler primer, I mean, you're just wasting a ton of time. Now, there's some areas that are smoother. So, you know, could you go back the second round and knock this down? Yeah, but you'd have to fill a primer it again, sand it again. It's just, it's, it's just time. It's just, you're wasting time and product. Um, I mean, and some of these are really deep where, I mean, it's, it's, you're better off using a glazing putty and filling this in. So I kind of wanted to show you that. I tried it, didn't work. Another issue 
is you start loading it on heavy and look it, it just clumps up and it, it's, you can't lay this stuff on really heavy, you know, I've seen stuff on the pages, people are like, well, you gotta do like three coats of filler primer and then sand it. Like I said, I just, it, it just, it seems like you're wasting so much time doing that. You're better off just putting a glazing putty on it from the start or doing a light sand and then doing a glazing putty. That, that's just my personal opinion. Um, the jaw piece here, even, which looked very smooth, you can just see once you start getting a primer on there, I mean, it's, that's a lot of work. So you do a glazing putty on here, it's going to pretty much fill all this in right from the get-go, and you've got runs, and you've got, so, you know, I figured I'd try it, see if it worked, and I don't think it's going to work, so I'm pretty much going to go back to the way I normally do it, which is pretty much doing a glazing putty right from the start. Um, and all this here, I mean, there's just, this was actually with a uh, Hatchbox PLA, but, um, the, uh, the overhang threshold just, it made a huge mark on here when I chiseled it off. So this all had to have body filler put on there. Obviously that was in one of the first parts of the video, but you know, all on this side here, I mean, you can't really go crazy with like sanding all this. Cause you're going to, I mean, what do you do? You've got to basically put a glazing putty over this and then just try to you know smooth it out as best you can um i still have to fill these in so what i'm going to do with these is just sand these down with with 220 and then i'll fill this in with a uh, body filler uh, i'm gonna have to make a new body line here because i'm a dum-dum and this file was for a hinged helmet which apparently i can't read because i never seen that in the description so i was just like yeah let's just print this right away so that's got to get filled in with filler. Um, this mark here has to get filled in. So we're going to sand this down. It's pretty much all going to get stripped off. Um, but we tried. I mean, we wanted to try and see, like, hey, you know, could it work? Now, these printed a little bit better. So if you have a print that's like this, yeah, you could probably do a couple coats of, uh, of filler primer. But these are smaller parts, and those always turn out nice and clean. But even on here, you can see some of the uh, marks there in the Z-band. So... You know, we tried it, but what we're gonna do with these is we're going to sand these with 220 and then get into our glazing process. So we're gonna let these obviously dry for a bit here before we start doing that. But um, I'm not saying that the whole filler primer, you know, doing multiple layers of filler primer isn't the way to do it. I just feel like you're you're wasting time and product um, if you go right into glazing it from the get go. Um, and you'll see here in the next step um, how how much better the uh, the glazing process works so we're gonna get these sanded down get them glazed up get them re-sanded get them reprimered and you'll see how smooth they are already all right uh, so here we are at the next stage so basically what I did is I sanded all this with uh, 220 and it you know it it knocked down some of it but not all and like I said there's just certain points uh, in this mask where it's the defects are just way too deep and you'd have to you know fill them in with a with a putty or a body filler anyways so um, you know it's something where filler primer is uh, it's you have to select your weapons carefully uh, this particular print just because of all the um, attention to detail, the, the small little areas where if you try to load filler primer in here, you're just going to lose all of the crispness and the general aesthetics of some of these areas. So um, I didn't really go too crazy. It was more or less a test to see, hey, will it work? Uh, will it won't? And I'm sh eventually you could get this smoothed out. It's, in my opinion, it's a waste of time, a uh, waste of product and money. So this is just going to get glazed over with a glazing putty. But what I've done here is we need to fill these gaps in. Uh, so I basically uh, constructed a molding type template. So lots of uh, masking tape here on the inside um, to give us some good support. Um, and basically all I'm gonna do is uh, lay some body filler in here um, and then just pop this out before it dries and it'll create that mold. Um, same thing here, just gotta fill that little gap in. Uh, and then obviously this whole thing will be glazed and I do have to fill in the holes uh, that are right here. That'll just be at the end. Um, but I'll kind of glop this on here, uh, the filler, try to get it as flush as possible and kind of show you that, um, that whole process of kind of creating a mold, so to speak. Um, but there's tape on the bottom to kind of follow the uh, thickness of the face shield. And I didn't um, bother to um, cut off the little 
hinge piece because that'll act as a support. So that'll actually uh, help me. Um, so I'm gonna load some body filler in here. Um, because the tape's on there, it won't affect anything on the faceplate. So I'll get some body filler put on here and show you how that's done. All right, so we are going to now apply the body filler to the gaps here to eliminate those. Uh, you don't really need a ton of body filler. Um, that's maybe, I don't know, silver dollar if you want to <laughs> reference that to something. Um, and then the hardener, and you don't need a lot of that either. So I'm basically just going to add the hardener to this and just kind of mix it around here. Actually going to put a little bit more hardener in there because it was kind of watery. There we go. So you kind of want your body filler here to be a little bit pinkish. And it's humid here so I'm going to have to work quick. Uh, humidity and heat makes this dry pretty quick, so I try to be fast here. Basically, all I want to do here is kind of fill in the hole that has been created from this print. Harden and then uh, put another layer on. And if you happen to get some in like a crevice like this, just have a screwdriver handy and just kind of poke that out. Uh, I didn't get any in this side, so it's okay. But this will harden pretty quick here because, like I said, we've got some uh, humidity. It's like 85% today, it's pretty obnoxious. Um, and then up here too, you can just, before this hardens, you can just knock it out. Um, but yeah, this'll, this'll harden pretty quick and then we'll put another uh, coat on. All right, so I went ahead and did the second layer a little bit thicker. Um, so what we'll do is we'll let this sit for a minute. Um, it's already pretty tacky. Um, it's getting hard already. Um, just because like I said, it's so humid. So we did the second layer on this and we're gonna let it sit for about five minutes and then I'll peel this tape off. We'll start sanding. Uh, we may have to do another layer of this, um, but like I said, this is a nice way to uh, make a mold. So we have to do, if you have to do any sort of new body lines or fill in gaps, uh, this is the best way uh, to do that. So we'll let this sit for a minute. Uh, we'll come back to it and see how it looks. All right, so really the first thing we wanna do is try to uh, take off all this tape on the inside and just pop this face plate off and uh, hope everything just kind of stays together. All right, so all the tape's taken off the inside. So now what I'm gonna try to do is just remove some of this tape and it'll, it should cause some separation between the body filler and the PLA. And hopefully I can just wiggle it off. Realistically, this piece is actually salvageable. What I can do, and again, this is I'm, I'm showing you trials and tribulations here. What I can do is throw some adhesive on here, glue this in, and then fill over it. So I'm actually going to salvage this piece. So although it popped off, watch what I do to fix this because it made a perfect mold. You can actually see it took some of the primer off. That might have been why it actually came off. But I'm going to salvage this piece here, so I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, but all these will basically 
harden and I'll be able to just snap them off and then sand and it'll be perfect. Um, these will all have to be reinforced. Let me flip this around. These will all be reinforced. Uh, I'll put more body filler on here to make a better adhesion. But overall, this was a, uh, a success minus that, but I'll fix that. All right, so I went ahead and filled in um, those gaps, those holes. Uh, I was able to, like I said, save that piece there, put a little bit of uh, adhesive where this arch was, knocked it in place, and then reinforced everything uh, with uh, some body filler on the inside. Um, I'll try to take this apart without it falling apart, but it's probably gonna fall apart. Yeah, it's falling apart. That's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, nothing really touched in here, just everything kind of sanded down, filled out, and then in here, uh, you can see the sanding job and how everything was reinforced. And I'll smooth that out a little bit more once we uh, get some more work done on it. Um, I just take these together momentarily just to hold it together. But um, I'm going to go ahead and glaze everything now. So the whole helmet, uh, the faceplate. Uh, these don't really need much glazing. These aren't too bad. I'll glaze this down here around these rough edges. Um, but the chin piece here, or lip piece, and these cheek pieces don't really need it, but I'm gonna glaze these three parts here. Show you how that looks and then do some more sanding. All right, so uh, update on the uh, Mark 85 helmet. So um, what basically what we did is uh, was we're filling in those areas with the body filler. Um, the whole thing was sanded uh, with 180 grit and then we uh, did the glazing putty on the entire mask um, and then sanded it with 220 and now we've applied two coats of filler primer so i'm going to kind of take it apart here so you can see it's just taped together so it might start to kind of fall apart but um even with you know it's obviously getting a lot smoother but you can still see a lot of those those bands and you know you, you have to sand and you have to use filler um you can't really rely on filler primer you're gonna waste a lot of time and a lot of money um you know, it, it, it does work. I just feel that when you do the glazing putty, it just speeds up the whole process. Um, I could not imagine doing this print with just filler primer without any sort of glazing putty or, or filler or something. It would just take forever. There might be smaller prints where you could do it, but when you're really trying to get these smooth, you definitely need, you know, a filler um, in conjunction with the filler primer at the end just to get this all smooth. So I'm gonna kind of take this apart here. Um, Especially back here where that reinforcement was. I mean, you can still see that there's some areas here where we have to sand a little bit better. Um, it's, you know, looking way better, but especially like on the sides here, if I can grab it. Um, you know, it just needs a lot more sanding, a lot of, uh, you know, glazing putty and things like that. So, um, lots of work ahead of us here. Um, these parts look really good. Um, Probably from here on out, these will just need, I'll probably go to 320 and then just filler primer and, and this actually will be done. Um, these printed really well and they are pretty smooth. Again, smaller parts where, you know, you can just sand them and kind of filler primer. So um, these will be uh, pretty much done after probably two more passes of sanding and some filler primer. Um, this just needs some spot filling here and there. Um, the eyes, I'm going to show you a new tool, how to clean that up really efficiently. Um, but this whole thing needs to be re-sanded and then some spot putty filler. And, uh, and here's definitely going to be a challenge with how small this is. I'll try to get that uh, as best as we can. So, but um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get it looking good. So on to more sanding and more uh, filling. So stay tuned. starting to get into the uh, finer details of uh, the mask uh, right now it's the uh, faceplate and um, one issue that um, 
when you print these face plates, um, when I print them, I always print them kind of like this. Um, it uses the least amount of supports, um, prints pretty quick. However, um, all the supports are in these, these eyelids here and it just creates a lot of, um, sloppiness, I guess. So even if you're trying to, even if you snap them off, some of them stay stuck in there. And if you scrape them off with a, uh, screwdriver or razor blade it, it hacks it all up so uh, I have found this tool here which is a sanding pen and I will leave a link for this in the in the description does a awesome job um, they offer different grits so this is 80 grit and then I'll um, swap over to 220 uh, but you can see here um, just how great of a job it cleaned up that eye so it really got a lot of that stuff out of there. And then I'm hoping a couple layers of filler primer will kind of smooth all that out. But, um, I mean, that from that is pretty good. So I definitely recommend getting one of these pens. Um, they're pretty cheap. They're like seven or eight bucks. And then you can buy a bunch of uh, sandpaper uh, refill inserts for them. So um, they really, really help you get in those fine areas uh, to uh, to clean up. So just wanted to show you some progress there, working on these eyes right now. Um, gonna knock this one down and then go over both of these with the 220 insert and then we'll see how we're looking. All right, so uh, I picked this up at my local Walmart um, and I figured I'd give it a try. Uh, it's a hook and loop, meaning it has Velcro on here and uh, these sanding sheets have Velcro on there and they give you 80, 120, and 220. Um, the 80, I don't really know how much I'll use. That's pretty aggressive, but the 120 and the 220, I can definitely see myself using. So uh, I figure in some of the areas where there's straight lines and some harder to reach areas, um, it may uh, work out pretty good. So open this up real quick. Um, so it's like a foamy kind of spongy holder which is nice so it contours to your hand it's got the velcro on this side and then basically um, you just have the velcro on these sides of the sandpaper and they just stick on and, and pull off so uh, I'm gonna try this out real quick though um, I do have uh, some little pieces here that I have to uh, get in some intricate areas so I'm gonna see how this works real quick all right, so uh, that little sanding tool actually helped out a ton. Uh, it knocked down all of the filler that I had on here super quick. Uh, I actually went down to 120, followed up with 220, and then just took my uh, wallet and sandpaper and 400, and it knocked down a, a, a ton of stuff here. It really, it's a pretty awesome tool. Um, I still have to filler primer on the side and then do a whole nother coat on this uh, top piece here. Um, and then I'll go through and sand it with 600 and then do one more layer and then it, it should be pretty good. There are some spots that need more attention uh, in here that I'll just have to uh, get in. I'll show you another tool that I'm using. You can see some of the lines up here. Um, the top should be pretty good, um, but there are some areas on the side um, just because this helmet it's pretty intricate you can see that little uh, line there I've got to get that a lot better um, but just trying to uh, you know put some filler primer in here I have to clean all in these little uh, nooks and crannies here yet uh, back there needs some work as well so still some some sanding to go um, but overall um, pretty good um, the chin is pretty much good. I've already primered, or I should say the jaw, I've primered the chin piece, uh, the ear pieces, or whatever you call those, cheek pieces need another layer of filler primer, uh, and will be good. So uh, I have to sand the faceplate, which is over there, I'm getting ready to do. So get that sanded down, and keep on moving along. So, um, but I'll probably actually get to painting the jaw and the chin lip piece thing today so those two will get painted uh, still got quite a bit of work to do on this the faceplate may or may not get painted today I'm not sure uh, but
but just update on this little tool here. Uh, pretty awesome. I'm gonna actually look and see if they have other grits of uh, sandpaper uh, that'll just attach on that hook and loop attachment. But it was just nice. It was easy to get on all the all the corners and. Uh, it worked very well, so I'll try to get a video of me using that. But um, it cleaned up this helmet really good. It's just all these fine, intricate areas I got to knock down now. So I'm going to get back to work here and get this thing smoothed out. All right, so we are in the uh, final sand and primer stage for the uh, faceplate here. Um, basically, what I did with this is uh, another layer of filler primer and uh, kind of let it sit for about an hour, did another layer and then came in and did um, 180, 220, 400, 600. You can see it actually has some shine to it, which just means it's very smooth and all those light little defects are pretty much out of it. Um, the primer I've been using is, it actually is not a filler primer, it's uh, etching primer, but it actually fills in really good. Um, I've said in my videos in the past, I highly recommend etching primer. Um, it just promotes maximum adhesion uh, for the paint. Um, and it does have a very light filling ability um, without actually having that clumpiness and that thickness um, like some filler primers do. So this thing's pretty much all set. I'm gonna wipe it down with some isopropyl alcohol, get it set up and do a little bit of uh, primer coating on here. So we'll get this thing uh, rock and rolling. All right, um, so after some minor touch-ups, um, here's the final primer. Uh, I did go through and I had a couple little, I always call them blips, um, in the paint. So I kind of went through and just hit those with 600 grit, which they're not really going to affect the uh, painting at all. Uh, overall, the mask is very smooth. It looks very nice. I did want to try to see if I could show you. Um, you can see right there on the mask, there's some very, very minor uh, things kind of like sanding scratches and whatnot. Um, not sure how well the camera can pick them up. Um, don't worry about those too much. Those will fill in. Um, a lot of times uh, people try to sand and sand and sand and sand and get this so smooth, but you have to understand that you're still gonna have wet sanding and color sanding to do after you paint. So uh, if you have very, very small blemishes, um, hairline scratches and things like that, don't really worry about it. Even in this eye here, in this corner, um, that will fill in with paint. That'll all kind of level out. Uh, hopefully I don't lose too much definition in the, in the eyes. Um, I really wish I would have printed this a different reason or in a different way. Um, all of the supports were right here, which made cleaning this up a, a real chore. So there's some areas where there's little imperfections and Again, it's nothing crazy, but I know a lot of people say don't print your face mask laying down because you'll get that print circle right here, but that would be a lot easier to fix than losing definition in the eyes. So on my next mask, I may actually try to uh, print it facing down and not have to deal with all the supports on there um, and see how it goes. Because I've tried printing it straight up. I've tried doing it at a tilt and no matter what, that's the main point of where the supports are and that's always the sloppiest that you have to clean up so um but other than that this is good to go so uh, let's get some paint on this guy and this primer is the one that uh, i'm really liking it's by rust-oleum i actually found it at home depot um it just lays really smooth really nice so i i do like it so
so we're gonna let that sit uh, for about 20, 30 minutes here and then come back and check it out. All right, so these are one of the uh, tools here I'm gonna be using to uh, get the mass knocked down all these little fine areas. Uh, these sand it like Q-tip kind of sanders. 120, 180, 400, and 800. I probably won't be using the 120s too much, but uh, the 400 and 800 for sure. So we'll try using these on some of these intricate areas in the mask and see how they work. All right, uh, so the final um, touch-ups, sanding touch-ups on the helmet were done. Uh, I did use those little swab it uh, sanding tools. Uh, I used the 400 and the 800 just to kind of go through all there. Uh, I cleaned up all these little spots here um, pretty good small little spot here that needed some glazing putty um there are some areas that are kind of meh but i'm not really gonna worry about them uh you know too much um overall it's it's that it's ready um so we're basically putting our final coat of etching primer on here uh, the reason why we do the etching primer is i did do trying to pick this up here i did two layers of the filler primer and you can see some areas where it's kind of um crater right here that's a perfect shot um, because there's filler in there so this happens sometimes when you put it on heavy um, but believe it or not it's actually super 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 smooth which is good it's not rough or anything this last layer of etching primer will completely fill this in okay so again when you're sanding you're going to get scratches and stuff you can see that there's shine here that's because i went all the way up to 800 which is good because it's smooth but all these little really minor craters and things that you see, I mean, I could go through and, and sand all those out, but it's, it's not going to matter because not only will the etching primer fill that in, but we're going to do three to four coats of paint and wet sand that paint. So this is all going to be smoothed out. So don't, the helmet doesn't have to look perfect on primer. It just needs to be close because the paint and the clear coat is going to fill and smooth out a lot. So little things like that, don't even worry about. This can happen when you apply filler primer heavier, and that's, again, why I really don't like using a ton of filler primer. Um, we just kind of went backwards on this and started with filler primer, and it just turned into being more work. Overall, um, the whole filler primer uh, technique, I'm not sold on. Um, my other helmet builds, I'm just going right into glazing putty. I actually probably wasted a day or two messing around with the filler primer. It just took way longer. Um, it, it just, it's, it's not beneficial at all. Um, I could have saved probably two sheets of sandpaper and, and a bottle of filler primer not doing it that way. So tons of different ways to skin a cat, but um, I prefer to, to use glazing putty over using a lot of filler primer because it's just a lot more uh, efficient and better. So. What we're gonna do is get this guy set up. We're gonna wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol, do its final layer of etching primer, and it will be ready for paint. Uh, get it set up, get it primed. I'm gonna move these painted pieces out of here because you never want to prime when you have painted pieces in. So I'm gonna get some stuff moved around here and uh, get this bucket here going. All right, so uh, here we are with the helmet. Uh, as I kinda stated, primer does fill in all those gaps you can still see it faintly but it's not like it was before and understand that once you start putting a couple coats of paint on um, you're not going to see it at all uh, we got the sides pretty pretty good pretty presentable these ear side pieces i'm iffy about i know the paint will fill some of that in um i this whole print was weird because i've seen other people that have different versions and they're completely different to those cheek pieces are connected to the jar, the face plate, and um, I went back and looked and I just couldn't find the other file. Again, this was actually a hinged one because it was the only file I could find and now there's there's like nothing, all of them you have to pay for. So I don't know, I went on Thingiverse, this is all I could find. Um, do 3D, you have to pay for it, so I wasn't about to do that. Um, but again, it's, it's, my, it's my rendition, it's my um, spin on things, so but overall, it, it looks very good. There's a lot of sanding, a lot of preparation, and I think when the paint gets on it, it'll look great.
that's it. That's it for part one. We are done with the first part, the preparation of the Mark 85 helmet. Uh, hopefully this video had some informative content for you. I know we use a lot of tools, uh, the XL sanding stick, the Swabitz, the Gator sander. Uh, if any of you are curious as to where I got it or you can't find it, um, just leave me a comment in the comment section and I can add it to the description or I'll just reply to your comment with the link and you can get that and give it a shout out. I thought all three of those tools were very helpful and they definitely helped speed up the process. Uh, we tried things a little bit differently in here uh, on this build. Uh, we did try going straight to that filler primer. Didn't work out too well. Like I said, I like to do trial and error and kind of show people what works for me. I always have people commenting saying, hey, how do you get your print so smooth? What's your process? Uh, I do like to try other people's processes. Um, and just like I said, for me, it just didn't work, but I kind of wanted to show that um, whole process. I think filler primer is great. It definitely serves a role, um, but your prints either need to be more fine-tuned or you need to use it at the right step of the process. Uh, you can probably hear in the background, I really need a silent board for my one printer. Um, but really guys, uh, thanks for viewing. Uh, obviously we're gonna have uh, part two up, which is gonna cover the painting process. Uh, masking, uh, clear coating, assembling, LEDs, probably the biggest topic that I've had lately is wet sanding and the polish and refinement. So that's all gonna be in the next video. Um, and it's been a great build so far. Uh, it's been pretty smooth. There have been a couple hiccups here and there, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, the helmet overall is coming out great so far, so definitely be on the lookout for part two of this video. Uh, if this video or this channel has been helpful to you or you just like watching my builds, please give me a like and subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you are subscribed, click the notifications tab to be notified when new videos are up. Uh, I try to bang these out as fast as I can, um, but like the title says, Darkwing Dad, I am a dad. I got three kids. Um, yeah, I do have a pretty cool room, but I still got dad duties, and I try not to get my wife too mad by working on my 3D prints all the time. All the time, I gotta you know clean up and do dad things. So, um, but I do enjoy you know doing these builds and sharing uh, my information with you guys. So, if there's anything in particular that maybe I'm not going over as specific or there's like a certain topic or anything that you may like um please let me know because chances are if you have a question on it there's probably thousands of other people that do i tried doing videos like how to uh save a uh, failed print and things like that like topics that i see you know on the forum so if there's something you specifically want to see please 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 let me know uh, i want to thank each and every one of you guys for viewing this channel um this is something I wanted to do for a long time. I just never really had the time. Um, like I said, I do live a very busy lifestyle, um, but I do really enjoy uh, doing these prints and sharing my experience with you. So uh, really guys, if you are subscribed uh, or you're a new subscriber, um, you know, thank you. I hope this channel grows into something awesome. Um, it, you know, it wouldn't be, I don't wanna say it wouldn't be where it is without you because the channel is still very, very small, very little, but uh, who knows. Uh, but I plan on doing a lot more of these builds. Uh, but really, thank you guys for uh, tuning in and watching. Um, if you can tell from the background, uh, obviously I do a lot of work here. And I'm going to be highlighting a lot of these builds that I've already done. Um, so you guys can kind of see uh, what I've been doing this whole time before I started filming. So, uh, But yeah, be on the lookout for Mar uh, Mark 85 Part 2. That should be up in hopefully a week or two. Um, I want to thank you guys all again. Uh, like I said, hit that like and subscribe. Click the notification tab. And we'll see you next time here on Darkwing Dead.